Oh yeah. Got, got something to say there, little buddy? Ah, uh, don't know what you're talking about. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Welcome to another episode of Glaze Review. If you're new to the YouTube channel, welcome, first of all. Secondly, this is the playlist where I take glazes off the shelf and test them for you on a bunch of different clays and do some combinations as well, so that way you can know what you're buying before you actually buy it. In today's Glaze Review, we're gonna be testing a Potter's Choice Glaze, PC-67 River Rock. It's from the Potter's Choice line and Amico is the manufacturer. And as usual, we're gonna be testing it on a base clay. These two are B mix with Grog. They're gonna serve as our porcelainous or at least least our white clay bodies to see how they test out. The high majority of the time, whenever they give you a test out on the bottle, it's usually a porcelain or a white clay body. So it's probably gonna mimic this if it is true to the bottle. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Sometimes you get what you pay for, sometimes you get jebated, who knows? I also really wanna see how it does on texture, so we'll be using this little weird V-shape mug right here. I did make it myself, yes, I do know that I called it weird, shut up. But I really wanna know how PC-67 looks on a textured clay body. We're also gonna be using one of my failed yarn bowls. Out of like every 10 yarn bowls I make, sometimes this little edge right here ends up kind of drooping a little bit too much. If you can see it, it's a little bit off from where it's supposed to be. So we're gonna use this as a textile as well. We're probably gonna mix this with another Amico glaze because I really wanna see what it looks like. We're also gonna mix this with some of my Lao Guy Green, my personal glaze that I make myself. I wanted to do this on a previous glaze review, but I knew that it would give it texture if I did, and my whole point of that video was to make sure it has texture. So I didn't do it in this video, but I'm dumb, dumb, do I'm doing it in this video. Oh, actually, these are all white clay bodies. I need a brown or dark clay body. Let's let's go let's go see what we got. Um, yeah, you'll you'll do. You'll, you're dark, no, right? You're a dark clay no, body. Don't do it. Yeah, you'll do fine. And we're also going to be testing it on this super dark clay body. This has an extreme amount of iron in it. It's Cassius clay. I think it's from Aardvark. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's from Aardvark. But I'm I'm 100% sure it's either called Obsidian or Cassius clay. I know I said 100% and I gave you two options. I'm sorry. With that being said, let's get started. So as we usually do, let's go over what we're gonna be putting in the kiln before we actually put it in. This is a B mixed with Grog yarn bowl that I glazed with June Perry's purple and put River Rock over it. These two are also B mixed with Grog, but they have River Rock as a base and I put C-10 Snow. It's also a glaze from the Amico line as well. The only difference is this one's like a Celadon and the other one's not, even though there's not a lot of Celadonish texture on it. And these two here are the base glaze. So this one here, is B mix with texture on it in order to see what River Rock looks like when it has good texture. And this one over here is a really dark clay body. I'm 102% sure this is Cassius Clay, but I don't think they call it Cassius Clay anymore. I think the company now calls it Obsidian. So if you're looking for it, that's what it is. Okay, let's put them in the kiln. Okay, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look. This first test tile is on white clay, and I new love it. Very, very seldomly am I happy with the 
test all on the bottle coming out different from what I actually test but this is fine if you look at the test style on the bottle it looks like this kind of brownish it, it's essentially rock colored it's 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 true to its name it's river rock colored but this color and this color are not the same color whatsoever these are completely different colors this is on white b-mix clay but it really looks like ancient jasper and i'm digging it to be honest with you in addition to looking like ancient jasper it also has this kind of brown melt to it that i usually don't get with ancient jasper and the inside oh, the inside looks beautiful as well for those of you who are familiar with ancient jasper you're probably getting strong jasper vibes right now but this kind of looks like ancient jasper on steroids it's really nice red up here is perfect this brown type of multi-layered melt down here is perfect and i know right here it looks like it's crazy it's not this is a glass right here or at least it's a glass like substance it's essentially silica after vitrification but this this is actual glass it just looks like it's crawling it's not though this glaze took very well i'm very happy with this mug usually i get kind of sad when the representation on the bottle doesn't look like what i got but i'm so happy with this i'm gonna put this in the online store i'm gonna I'm gonna sell this. I don't make a lot of stuff like this, so we're gonna see how this does. I'm gonna put you over here in the good pile yes, because sir. I love you. Yes, As for the black clay test style, it did horribly. It didn't do too well at all, if I'm being honest with you. Both on the inside and outside, it essentially just turned super, super dark. It kind of looks like I put a clear gloss glaze over it, even though I know I didn't. So I'm gonna discount this one. I'm just gonna put it in the bad pile because this this didn't do well at all you can kind of barely see the spots where it tried really hard to become part of the clay body but it it's it's less of a glaze at this point and it's more of a well that you, you knew it was gonna happen clay body's too dark black clay bodies like this usually look best when they're in their natural form i very rarely buy a black clay body and then think "Ooh, what glaze am i gonna put on it it usually looks good in its natural form as it is when you just fire it without any glaze okay let's take a look at that defunct yarn bowl this one was june perry's purple mixed in with a little bit of river rock on the top just to see how it performed and it's giving me strong albany slip brown vibes The combination of the two glazes did fine, like if I put this on anything else, I think this type of creamy Albany Slip Brown would do well, but I could just buy a bottle of Albany Slip Brown from Amico and get the same exact result instead of mixing two different glazes, one of which is made by my own hand and getting this result. And I think Albany Slip Brown has a far better texture anyway, so I, I think this one is kind of a bust. There's no real reason to mix these two glazes together, but at least we know not to mix these glazes nope. together anymore. And that's the point of experimentation. You know, like your high school days. These two are probably the best testers I've ever had come out on a glaze review. These wow. are the River Rock test styles, but with C-10 Celadon Snow on the top of them. The sad part is that I was like, eh, these aren't that great. I'll use them as a tester. The flange is too big on the bottom. I was just trying to experiment with super large flange stuff. But now that they came out really well, I regret just using them in this nature. The bottom is the glaze that we're testing, the PC-67 River Rock, while the top here is combined with a top layer of C-10 Amico Snow. I'm also very happy to say that we repeated it on the second cup the second time and it turned out exactly how the first one did. I'm really happy with this because now I know that these two glazes together make this specific combination. Got a little bit on the inside here too. It looks great, it looks phenomenal. I know I said this once before and I usually don't do this, but I am gonna be putting these on the online store as well. I don't usually do this. Usually I'm like, oh, let's pick up some 
trash leftover cups that I made for experimentation. Just throw them away afterwards. But these are so nice. The color melt is so good that I have to put them in the store. I really do. I really wanted to test out some combination with C-10 because although we did do a review on the glaze itself, there were plenty of comments asking like, hey, can you combine this with C-10? I want to see what it makes. The glaze itself is not that great, but when it's combined with super dark glazes, it seems to work out fairly well. And River Rock is now one of the combinations that I know about. The bottle ain't got much in it though, so I'm like, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to figure that out. But thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. We're gonna give this glaze River Rock PC-67 from Potter's Choice a 4.5 out of five. And the only reason it is getting 0.5 less than a five out of five is because this is not the color it promised on the bottle. This, this color is like almost the polar opposite from this color. These are not what I got. If you're familiar with this playlist, you probably know that one of my pet peeves is that the colors on the bottle usually don't come out like the product or the colors on the product. And that angers me because like, you're giving me an actual representation of what it's supposed to be based on your testing and you've done all these tests. And then like, I get a completely different one. And I know it's hard to get everyone's stuff down for everybody's kiln, but you know, I'm happy that this one time it didn't do it. It turned out better than usual because usually it does not turn out better than usual. Usually you buy like a Renaissance or a crystal glaze from Coyote and you're like, oh, it's blue. Nope, it is brown. It turned brown. But thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. Remember to click all those YouTube buttons so my YouTube overlords are happy. They do not have me chained to the desk right now. I'm, um, send help, send, send help. Thank you for your patronage.